Hello, hello, hello. My name is Greg, and you're listening to the Narcissist Guide podcast. How exciting. Episode one. Thrilled to get this under the way. Because, honestly, I've been thinking of doing this for ages, and I can't tell you how long it's taken me to actually get everything set up and, like, ready to do this. And honestly, I just haven't had the confidence to do it for a while, which I know is quite ironic considering it's called the Narcissist's Guide podcast, but hey-ho, we love a little bit of irony. Irony's a little um, key feature of comedy. But yeah, the, the, I mean, the fact that I'm not ready or not confident to do this, is, is that's, that's not the funny part. Please don't take that as a joke. But uh, anyway, let's get started. So... What is this podcast about? I hear you say. I can hear you screaming through your screens. Honestly, well, inside voices, please. Bloody hell, gonna blow my eardrums. But yeah, this podcast is gonna be me sharing my words of wisdom and dropping my ten pence in on anything that's going on in the world, really. Like, I just, whatever I feel like I wanna do, I'll do it. Because at the end of the day, this is my podcast. I don't see any of you sat here next to me with a microphone and some headphones, do I? God. Yeah, today is very egotistical, and rightly so, because it's a an introduction to me. You know, give you the lowdown, spill the tea, I'll tell you everything you need to know. And honestly, there's a lot, so buckle up, sit down, make a cup of tea, get some bickies, or some chocolate, you know, because I'm not going to lie, I'm more of a chocolate fan than I am a biscuit fan, unless it's a jammy dodger. I am a sucker for a jammy dodger, you know. Don't dip it in tea, though, because, like, tea and jam just doesn't actually mix. Anyway. Right, so, a little bit about myself. I feel like you guys deserve an explanation, because, for all you know, I'm just some random, some random kid. I'll say kid. I'm 19. Oh, first bit of information about me there. But I'm just some random individual, shall we say. Just talking in your ear roll right now. But you know what? It's fine. That's what, that's what you're here for. Because some people like the podcasts where you just kind of listen to someone rambling on. Like you could not, you don't even need to pay attention to me. You probably won't. But honestly, that's absolutely fine. I'm not bothered. But um, yeah, it's it's a podcast. Like I say, doing whatever I want, chatting about whatever I want. And yeah, a little bit about myself. Oh my god, I got so off track. I'm so sorry. Um, well, my thoughts are just all over the place right now. Never mind. We move. Because that's life, isn't it? But uh, yeah, a little bit about myself. 19, I go to university and I study drama. A little bit of a theatre kid, means lots of trauma. Absolutely brilliant. Um, And honestly loving it right now. No, that's a lie. I'm such a liar. I am struggling. So I have an exam coming up soon. Am I ready for it? Absolutely not. Because here's the thing, It's it's for sign language. And if anyone follows me on TikTok, they know I did my first signing exam where you know you sit in front of a camera and you have a conversation with your teacher in sign language over a couple of topics that that they pick so i did that was bricking it don't know if i did it well i doubt i did no i do i I know i didn't do well because i couldn't see my teacher so i put contacts in last second because i was like oh maybe i'll get extra marks for like not obstructing my face with my glasses even though they're glasses that i need to see so like if I got marked down for that, that's like, I don't think that's allowed actually. But um, anyways, I put my contacts in and I didn't put them in properly, but the like, I was in the waiting room, like on Zoom to do my exam. And I was like, oh bollocks, I haven't got enough time to like take them out, put my glasses back on or, and I was sat quite far away from my camera because you've got to be in the right position for them to see a signing space, which is like this imaginary box around you that signs are allowed to be done in. So I I was sat far away and I couldn't see the screen properly. And I I was guessing what my tutor was signing during this exam. And I kept kind of signing and asking her to repeat the sign because I just, I just didn't get it. I just couldn't see what she was doing. And oh, it was an embarrassment. But no, I've got a written exam now. And there's a history part to the exam. And we, we had this history project that we've been doing throughout the course. And uh, we're supposed to get tested on certain sections every week. We have done, but because it's Zoom, it is so easy to cheat. So I have been cheating for, I mean, for the seminars I actually turned up to, because there were some that I didn't turn up to 
consecutively. But um, the ones that I did turn up to, I would slightly cheat, but like I'd pretend to get things wrong so that it didn't look too shady. But um, yeah, so that's actually on my read exam and I wasn't paying attention to it, but it's, it's fine because I know there's others that are in the same position as me and we're just gonna go with the flow. You know, life when life throws you a curveball, gotta hit a home run, haven't you? I, I mean, I don't know if that's actually a saying or anything. I don't play baseball. I don't really do much sport. Although I did trampolining when I was younger and cheerleading. Those were fun. I used to be a trampoline gymnast. Is that what they're called? Trampolinist? For like five years. But I was very young. So like my career, if you were, or if, if, if you would, was um, it had ended by the time I was 16 because I dislocated my knee trying to do a Barani, which is a front somersault and a half twist. And it wasn't even during like any specific training. It was like during a PE lesson in secondary school. Because I wanted, to sh I wanted to show off, yeah. So a little bit about me is that I'm a bit of a show off, especially around people that intimidate me. Like that's my defense mechanism is I'll show off just to make them kind of be like, oh, he's a cool kid. Even though, it, oh, it just doesn't work. It backfires in almost every single occasion. This one specifically, because I, you know, we're doing the warm ups, did my routines and things that I was like practicing. And then I decided let's do a Barani. Cause I saw this, this guy, he was on one of the other trampolines doing some somersaults. Form was all wrong. Like the tuck was not there. He was just kind of flipping about like a fish out of water. And his mates were like, oh, that's so cool. Oh my God, do it again, do it again. And there's me being like, right, okay, let me let me show these people out. And I went to do a Barani. I did two and I went to do the third one. And as I did it, I didn't quite turn fast enough. Yeah, because the Barani's front somersault and a half twist. So you're supposed to flick your legs out as you're like flipping and then land it like 180 degrees to the way you were starting and I only turned about 90 degrees so my body's still trying to twist as I'm hitting the trampoline and I was off center so it wasn't as bouncy and next thing I know I'm laying on the trampoline my kneecap is on the side of my leg and I'm I'm not even screaming at this point I'm just like I I didn't wind myself, but I wasn't breathing because like, no, was I breathing? I don't know. I mean, I must have breath. I must have breathed. Otherwise I wouldn't be alive today. But my knee had given me so much pain. And then I had to lay on the trampoline for 45 minutes. Yeah. 45 minutes waiting for this paramedic to come with a bunch of teachers just around me. And then my mum decides to turn up obviously from work just to, check I'm okay, the school called her or whatnot. And as she came into the sports hall, she walks up to the trampoline, looks at my leg, looks at me, and then just goes, Greg, you're an absolute tit. And all of the teachers were mortified because they were like, how the hell has this parent just come in, not even gonna ask if he's all right, just straight up call him a tit. And the thing about my mum is that she has no sympathy for any of us because my brother, who's 22 months older than me so like almost two years he plays rugby or used to because he got a, he got tackled one game and it was quite a bad tackle from what I heard I wasn't actually there so I couldn't tell you but um, this rather large kid who dare I say was too large to be playing in this um, category like this age group because they were like only like what 14 15 tackles my brother and lands on his shin in a funky sort of way and my brother's shin just snaps just straight up snaps I mean I could imagine how bad that hurt but like it was it was a whole palava because the shin wasn't growing back whatnot you know it, I mean it wasn't growing back in the right place but then it suddenly started growing back in the right place I don't know I'm not my brother you'll have to ask him if you want to find the nitty-gritty details but my mum from what I heard didn't give him any sympathy either she, like she just doesn't do it like sympathy is just something that's not within her well to a degree at least if it's something like serious then she'll have sympathy of course like but she's not a sociopath but um yeah so she comes into the sports hall absolutely no sympathy just just goes along with it as if it's another tuesday afternoon you know she seemed more inconvenienced by the fact that she had to stop working to come and kind of 
look after me. And then, you know, paramedics arrive and they popped the knee, my knee back in on the trampoline. I was on gas and air and I was hyperventilating on gas and air to the point where I knocked myself out, which apparently was a good thing because it meant that it was easier because I wasn't being as difficult. But hey ho. And, um, and then the rumors started flying around because obviously it was like a big event in my little school. Um, this one boy, he was he was another one of the my my fellow homosexuals in the year. You know we love spilling tea, we love we love the gossip, we love the drama. And he goes around saying that the paramedic had to dislocate my other knee so that they could get my right knee back in place. Now I'm I'm no paramedic, nor am I a any sort of medical professional, but I don't think that's how it works, especially because my the knee that I dislocated was the one that was kind of on top so I was in like a fetal position on the trampoline and the knee that was on top was the one that was dislocated so all he had to do was just get me on my back straighten out my legs pop the knee back in job done but yeah then the rumors started flying around like oh they had to dislocate his knee to get it back in oh I heard you broke your leg as well and uh I I was off school for six weeks so I couldn't actually like address any of the rumors but when I came back I felt like I felt like a main character you know I came in on my crutches I was like, hey guys, I'm back now, here for here for the vibes. But um, yeah, that, that was fun. I mean, talking of secondary school, during secondary school, I was a bit of a goody two-shoes, shy boy, just all the time. I thought I was being a bad boy in from like year seven to year nine, because I, that was before I, I was about to say came out. That's the wrong word. I was outed and to the guy that outed me to this day if I see him it's on site straight hands no questions but before I was outed I was like this really shy oh like oh sorry miss I'll, I'll I'll do this for you miss like, I'll carry the books or I'll y you know absolute suck up and my friends were the opposite so we'd get these things they called them debts like you know, like debt collectors, you're in debt to the bank, that kind of thing. But like, it was like, debts, yeah, debts were like detentions. And I don't know if they just kind of thought of being cool and abbreviating it, but they just called it debts. I don't know, it was really weird. And we had to call all our female teachers madam. So my form tutor was madam. And oh, bleh, I'll, I think I've got to bleep that name. Maybe not. I'll check. But yeah, we had madam this, madam that. But the teachers were all just Mister or Doctor, depending on if they had the title. Anyway, oh my God, where was I going with this? Oh me, um, I was a goody two shoes, and I was like, yes, madam, I'll do this for you, madam, I'll do that for you, madam, or yes, sir, yes, sir. You know, I was I was a little kiss up, and then I got outed. I got rejected from the group that I was with, but it was fine because one of them thought I had a crush on him. Just, just because of the fact I was gay. Won't lie, he is clapped. Like, even to this day, I would see him in the street and I'd look the other way. But, um... And I just thought, how egotistical of you to think that I'm staring at you. Like, I've got better things to, to do with my life, do with my time, you know. I'd, I'd rather look at a bloody butterfly flying past, or I'd rather look at a blade of grass or paint dry. Like, oh... That's one thing I'll never understand. I'll never understand straight boys who are like s self conscious around gay guys. Like they think I'm going to be really predatory, and then when I tell them that, then they're not my type, they get really offended and they're like, oh, like, I bet you're just lying. I bet you're just trying to cover it up. You're a little batty boy, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, no, you're a solid two out of ten. I have standards. Come on. Yeah, anyway came out I had a main character moment where um, I felt like I was you know the baddest in school I was like oh everyone's talking about me I'm the centre of attention it did come with its drawbacks though because I did get a punch in the face st straight after I got my braces on that wasn't fun and uh, I was speaking of braces I remember sitting in art and um, this girl she asked me bear in mind we was like what year year 10 either way we were below the age of 15 and she goes oh Greg make sure you don't suck dick with braces and I was like uh, oh, no taken wasn't going to do it anyway 
but she was like yeah like you don't like it's apparently it's not nice for them and like it hurts it hurts your mouth like your lips get a bit cut up and it's just not very good and I was like oh well thanks for the information I'll put it in my notebook actually needless to say I never did that and um but yeah my school was just full of loads of those kind of people who were acting far too mature for their age like they'll be like they'll be like 15 years old and getting absolutely smashed I mean myself included I the first time I got drunk was when I was 15 although I don't support underage drinking but hey if it happens if it happens to happen you know if if that's the way the cookie crumbles then so be it you know if that if you've made your bed then lay in it but yeah came came the centre of attention for a while loved it loved the limelight hated it after a while because I wasn't like close to anyone and like a fun fact really sad fact I had no like proper f- close friends I was like a post-it note so like you know you could take a post-it note off a page so I wasn't like a solid I wasn't a solid piece of paper I wasn't a solid page in a book I was a post-it so I'd go from page to page aka friend group to friend group basically whoever took me at the time although there was this one group of girls who I still speak to two of them frequently I say frequently we can we can have a catch up and we can still be you know having a bit of a chin wag to this day and it won't feel like it won't feel like any time has passed and I love those girls to bits I'm also still best friends with oh my god my year six ex so I was with this girl big up Caitlin I love her to pieces I wonder if she's listening oh I don't know but we went out in year six and I won't lie she was the longest relationship I've ever had and honestly dare I say best relationship because we had a grand old time we basically were just best friends and said we were boyfriend and girlfriend when we really weren't but like we we were having a good time anyway you know there was no issues on either end we got each other little chocolates for Valentine's Day oh I remember it oh the memories I remember getting my chocolates from her on Valentine's Day after I gave her hers so I got her this little like mixed chocolate thing that said I heart you or I love you but spelled L-U-V no that's what it was it was I love you spelled L-U-V but the the V was a little pink heart and it was the same chocolate as those you know you know this little pink mice it was the same as those honestly I was I was an amazing boyfriend she, I hope she's I hope she knows that because I've really set the standard high and I think that's why we're both singles because we set the, we set the bar too high. But um, yeah, that ended. And I remember, yeah, I remember dropping my chocolates in the middle of the road because I tried eating one on the way home because I was a bit cheeky. And I dropped it in the middle of the road and I was like, oh no, like looking like a little crab, just picking up these little chocolates from the road. It was oh, it was so sad. Honestly, it was a real tragedy. But um, no, that was fun. I love it to bits, and we're still we're still best friends. But um yeah that was that's me in secondary school I don't actually think I gave you guys that much information there but hey ho that's in the past so it doesn't really matter does it and I then went on to college studied science because I thought I was a little know-it-all even though I struggled I, I struggled for the first year and like the thing is I took a BTEC so like you can get past merit and distinction and but it's like a ladder system so you have to get past the merit to be able to get the distinction and like distinction is like equivalent to A and there were certain tasks for specifically the distinction or specifically the merit so if you didn't so like say there was five five assignments in a module say on module or assignment one you got a pass and you didn't get the merit or distinction that means you're capped at a pass for the rest of the module so you don't have to do the merit or distinction work for me who didn't try it was absolutely beautiful because I could cap myself at merit consciously so that I didn't have to do the distinction work because I was a lazy so-and-so but at the end of the day I thought I thought I was really onto something you know I thought I really did something like my friend Fran we were in science obviously that was the course I studied oh, sorry um we was in one of the modules it was like foundations of science where we did lots of titrations and things and we both got merit on the first assignment and we thought we really did something we were like yes merit let's go we didn't have to do distinction work 
and it really caught up with us because we were looking at universities and the sort of predicted grades that we had because it was so easy to predict what grade you were going to get in BTEC even after like the first year you knew what you had to get in the next year to get like triple distinction or triple distinction style or you know distinction distinction merit whatever grade it was you knew what you was going to get and I was sweating and so was Fran because Fran has gone to um, a very good university in London it's absolutely amazing quite proud of them to be fair because we were, we were from a rough college but um, I got triple distinction and we were both stressed because on the last assignment I had a resub to do which is like they give you a second chance and if you don't get it if you don't get the grade then you don't get the grade you know but um, and we were sat there stressing on so much because we were like oh if we don't get this then we can't get into the universities that we want and oh it's so bad but no it was it was fine it was okay like we both got the grades that we needed and we're both at university now like our, I think we were at our first choices I might be wrong I don't oh, I, I mean I think it was his first choice anyway that was college I was I became a proper bitch in college like there was this one guy in my class bless him and me Fran and my friend Dylan as well we were a little little trio for the most part and we just ridiculed this one kid like I actually think I was a bully but that, like he'd laugh along and he'd give it back to us and like we both on multiple occasions we were like oh if you think these jokes are too far let us know we'll stop but like I dare say he was too might have been too timid to say please stop but we did we did make a conscious choice to like ease off but like we were bad we were really horrible and we were like little little assholes in class but oh uh, hey ho like I say those days are gone good memories though I don't know if I prefer college to university actually I think I had more fun socially at college but I prefer the course at university because I'm studying drama there's a whole story behind that about how I got from science to drama so you know what I'll tell it now I started off on ecology and conservation and I was so excited I was like yes it's a biological science let's get into this gig you know absolutely going to turn it out this year oh I was excited and I was supposed to have a year abroad to Hawaii that went to shit but um never mind that that was that they went to shit because of what I did so I was hating the course and I'm no good at maths like my housemates my old course mates anyone you ask will back me up I am god awful I literally 2 plus 4 is 5 no what what 2 plus 2 is 5 is what I was supposed to say but I said 2 plus 4 is 5 either ways they're both incorrect but um that's the sort of wavelength I'm on and um yeah because of that I dropped out of ecology because they said that there was a maths exam and it it was 25% of your grade and I was like you know what I'll try it at first went to a seminar and had a breakdown cried in the middle of the class because my teacher was like oh Greg do you want to walk us through functions you know tell us what you know and I said I, I've never done functions and all of their faces dropped I will not forget it because the, I was stressed it was burnt into my head and then he went oh uh anyone else want to take over maybe Greg can learn like kind of quickly now because he was like oh you were supposed to you were supposed to know this stuff from A-levels but I didn't do A-levels I did a B-tech and that really screwed me over not to discourage anyone who does B-tech and is going to university but there will be gaps but um yeah and then I was like oh can I go to the toilet and he was like yeah so I got up left I took my bag with me, cried, ran, went to admissions and was like, I want to swap. So I swapped to drama and all the little Karens in the in the office saw them pop their heads up and they were like, oh, that's a dramatic change. Like, he must be really confident in his skills to be able to swap. And they gave me an audition, luckily, and my audition was with the module, not module, like the course leader. And bless him, he's a lovely old man. And we basically just had a chat about fairy tales and things and I did the inspector's speech where he's like there are millions and millions of Eva Smiths and John Smiths I still remember it and it was like the beginning of last year and um, 
yeah, we were just having a chat about it. And I only chose that speech because I did it in GCSE English, English literature. And it was it was the easiest thing I had to do because I had like, I remember having like 12 hours to memorise this speech, which actually was a long time. But um, yeah, I did the audition, absolutely smashed it because he gave me a place on the spot. Well, he had to, otherwise, otherwise it would have been too too late. And I got into drama, and I'm, I've been smashing it ever since, baby. You know, been into the woods, done some directing, done some writing. How exciting! But um, and honestly, that kind of brings you up to present. That brings you up to present day. I don't know why I thought I'd have to give you a life story. You know, that's me. That's me being weird. That's me being oversharing, oversharing. Because something told me that you guys were in need of me sharing my life story. Anyway, on to, on to new things. I put up a... What was it? Questions. Question submission thing. You know when you can type something in on Instagram? On like someone's story? Did that. So I was like, oh, ask me questions that you want to know about me. Because after all, this is the introduction episode. You guys want it. You want to hear a bit about me. Well, I say you want to. I don't actually know that for sure. But that's what you're getting, so I hope you're happy. So the first question was, what makes you a narcissist? Right, okay. I use that term very loosely because I actually have a bit of a confidence issue to the point where, you know the saying, fake it till you make it? That's what I've been doing my whole life. And it's it's evolved. So you've got to keep it in check because my confidence has evolved into being a bit egotistical to the point where some of my old school friends do call me a narcissist because I I tell them that I'm that I'm the shit and I'm I'm the baddest and I'm this, that and the other. And if I'm in a cute outfit, I'll let everyone know. Like right now I'm wearing this lovely black turtleneck, but because I'm not filming this, you can't you guys can't see. But it's on my it's on my Instagram if you ever wanted to have a look. At Greg underscore J underscore H underscore you have to fact check me on that one but I think that's it I'll, I'll put it in a link or something but yeah I kind of faked some confidence until people were like wow you're so confident like how do you how do you do that like how do you not have like social anxiety and things like this like how are you not scared to speak in front of people and like just be yourself little do they know I am bricking it on the inside you know I could be screaming on the inside going to do like a speech or going on stage or just going to a social gathering I like it really stresses me out sometimes but you know fake it till you make it that that's a bit of advice I could give you guys actually is it, it really helps and I don't think that there's anything else that's worked as well so you know just kind of go with it go with the flow baby just have a have a ball with it if you want to go and be confident imagine yourself as I don't know a Kardashian uh, any sort of celebrity that you know is confident powerful stunning everything like Lady Gaga you know unique stunning creative ever changing never the same I don't know if I got that right but hey ho that's my version of it but you know just put on a front and it'll work it'll really work it's like putting on a mask and that mask slowly becomes your actual face like sometimes I have a complex where I'm like oh I'm showing these people a different side of myself that's not authentic but then I realise no it is authentic because otherwise the gig would have slipped up like the charade would have ended and it hasn't and it's been going on for a good few years now and you know that that's a win that's a win in my books you know society zero greg one okay when did you come out and how did your family react so when it was year nine end of year nine no beginning of year nine um i was outed in maths like i say the individual who outed me it's on site i hope you know that and um yeah so i previously in the lesson before this so literally 15 minutes before this all happened, I told 
three people. We'll say person number one, person number two, person number three. Person number one is gay, person number three is bi, person number two, not too sure. I think she's just, she's just herself. And you know what? Love that for her. But correct me if I'm wrong, we're all part of the LG LGBTs, you know, the alphabet mafia. And, um, but one of them let it slip to this popular group that used to hang around the, the, the exit of the sports hall every break and lunch. And I have my suspicions. I think it was person number one or person number three because they both have a, um, a mindset where they want to climb to the top because person number one told me that I could be popular one day. I just had to stop hanging around with certain people and needed to start hanging around with the right people. And I thought that's bollocks because the right people are the people that I'm hanging around with. It's the people that support me. It's the people that, the people that are here to back me on whatever endeavor I want to do. And at the moment, I'm still in the same friend group, and they still back me. I think we, we I mean, we, we insult each other, but it's all in good fun. Yeah. So it was doing maths. This guy literally turns around and goes, "Wait, Greg, are you gay?" And I won't lie, I don't think he remembers this because it must not have been that important to him. But to me, it was like the end of the world. And I said, "You got." I said to myself, "You got two choices right now." You say yes, get it over with, you know, rip off the bandage. Or you say no, and then have to face the music at some point. And I thought to myself, this is easy, because he's already done the hard bit. He said the G word. All you've got to do is say yes or no. So I said yes. And the class was in uproar. A guy that was sitting next to me pulls out a, a Bible. And I took it immediately the wrong way. But I, I realise now that the denomination that he aligns with, or kind of believes in... Uh, they're quite LGBT friendly and I even went to one of their youth groups for quite a while spoke to some of the leaders even identified as Christian for like a year but then I kind of denounced that for personal reasons but yeah he was actually quite supportive and he's still a good friend of mine and I love him to bits but I just kind of in the heat of the moment took it, to bit, took it, took it the wrong way but it doesn't matter and my family so my brother was the first one to know because he went to the same school as me he was only the year above me at the time and he found out through word of mouth because you know news spreads like wildfire because these little snakes in the grass go around you know hissing at people telling telling little things that they hear like like with the whole knee thing and th like this was big news because i was the first person to come out in my year not the last i was a bit of a trendsetter trailblazer you know, these bitches were jealous of me, so they tried to come in for my gig, dethroning me, but never worked. But yeah, he found out, and he was Christian, but from a different denomination, and at the time, he was very against it, and he was like, no, I don't support this, and he said some mean things to me, it was a bit of a turbulent time for the family, but um, it's since been resolved, and I'm actually quite close with him, and we can have a laugh, you know, but we, we don't really bring up sexuality or religion to each other, because we know it doesn't end well. And my mum was fine. Because, my, see, my brother told my mum before I got to tell my mum, and she kind of forced it out of me. And, I, I mean, I make it sound more dramatic. It was. She was asking me questions like, is there something you want to tell me? And I knew what she was on about. I said no. She said, are you sure? I said no again. And then she was like, okay, fine. I'll leave it, whatever. Literally not even five seconds had passed. And I was like, mum, I'm gay. And then I started crying. And she was like, why are you crying? Like, it's literally not that deep. My sisters were both very supportive. My oldest sister was going to take me to a drag show for my 18th. But we couldn't go in the end because it got sold out too quickly. Like, we didn't realise how quickly the tickets would sell out. And so I couldn't go. But it was fine because we went to the Tower of London or something. I think that was the same year. Yeah, might be. But she's very supportive. She, she's a big ally. So, I mean, both my sisters are big allies. And, um, yeah, we just kind of, we just kind of vibe, key, key, have a little fun, spill a little tea on FaceTime nowadays, because I'm, I don't live near them, because I live in Norwich, away from my family who live in Essex slash London, it's a weird overlap, but it's a fun little town. Okay, so what got you into acting? Oh, have you seen Absolutely Fabulous? Oh, my Christ. That show 
fueled my fire to become a living, breathing patsy. You know, Joanna Lumley, she's bloody hilarious. And her performance as Patsy, oh, it has me in stitches every time. Also, Ed, Eddie, in Absolutely Fabulous as well. I feel like I've got the name wrong and I'm actually like, I don't want to say the actress's name because I know I'm going to say it wrong because I'm, I'm thinking, it's not Julie Andrews. Julie, no, not Julie Walters, Julie Walters. Judy Waters played Rose in Mamma Mia, didn't she? Was it Julie Andrews? You know, the one that goes, oh, sweetie, oh, sweetie, get mummy a coffee. Get mummy a coffee, please, sweetie. And she's like, oh, come on, pants, let's go and have some, let's go and have a fag outside, you know, and let's go shopping, go and have some lunch, you know what I mean? I just want to go shopping, you know. Oh, queen, love her. But that show really ignited my sort of fire to want to act as well as the Catherine Tate show the Catherine Tate show is by far the funniest show I've ever seen in my life Catherine Tate is a woman who she's like so creative with these characters and she's so fun and she has an endless stream of these ideas and she's the way she can switch from like nanny to you know the, the posh family she's like would you like a gooseberry cinnamon yogurt oh it is amazing she's everything but uh yeah that that's what got me into acting also the desire to get out of science got me into acting i mean i always wanted to do it i always wanted to be a part of the performing arts but i just needed a reason like a well like an excuse because my mum didn't really think it was a very serious i mean she still doesn't but she doesn't think it's a very serious job or she doesn't think it's a very serious career but hey-ho, she might be right, she might be wrong. All in good time. Uh, share an embarrassing story. Ah, an embarrassing story. Right. I'm going to get real and intimate with you guys real quick. Have you ever had a sports massage? Because I had one, part of a Groupon offer. So I... It was like late night one night. I'm looking on Groupon, looking for the best deals. You know, I want to... I want to bag a deal and I see one for a chiropractor and I have like sciatica so my instinct was let's go get it let's do it worst comes to worst we'll just see what happens so I do it I go and then um while I'm there they do these assessments and they're like yeah your piriformis muscles very tight we recommend you have like a massage like just to kind of loosen it up and me thinking you know, great, sounds beautiful. So, little, little, I said so, I was like, so, a little bit northern. So, basically, now, um, the piriformis muscle, if you don't know, is the muscle that runs from your hip down the back of your thigh. And that was inflamed and pressing on my sciatic nerve, meaning there were shooting pains down my leg. Wasn't very fun, wasn't very great. Anyway, I go and have this massage. And prior to this massage, I had googled or checked up on Instagram the name of the masseuse because my biggest stress was I was like oh my god what if it's an attractive guy like what do I do then oh like I even spoke about it to my housemates and this was around the time that the second like November lockdown happened and I thought do I just do I just cancel it do I say I've got covid do I just postpone it or and I was reconsidering it and my, my housemate she was like Greg what if you you know get a bit excited and I thought well exactly so that's what spurred on this 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 search this detective mindset where I'm I'm searching this masseuse's name on Instagram I find it because he's followed by the spinal kind of the chiropractor he's followed he's followed by them on Instagram I thought this guy's insanely hot I I started sweating I started stressing thinking oh no what am I gonna do this is gonna be so embarrassing oh and then um I got an email the day before saying that my masseuse had changed because for some reason the original masseuse couldn't do it so they were like here's here's your new masseuse lovely lady and I thought great it's a woman I'm not gonna get excited or anything I'm like nothing embarrassing is gonna happen you know the worst that will happen is like 
I'll fart or something and but I dare say she's experienced worse but uh I get there I get into the room and I'm sat down and she's like right okay uh we're doing this that and the other today and I was like yeah you know piriformis massage please to get into this gig and she's like yeah absolutely she's like can you take off your clothes and I I I I heard what she said but I still said uh, what and she's like yeah, yeah yeah just take off your clothes but like keep your underwear on and just we've got towels to wrap you up so you nothing revealing is gonna happen now I'm, I'm I'm a twig I'm literally six foot two and nine stone seven I will fall over with a strong enough gust of wind so I have quite bad body conscious issues like self-confidence issues when it comes to my body and so I get dressed because I'm like, you know what, this could be a turning point. I could be really confident. I could even start on OnlyFans if I really wanted to. And strip down to my underwear, get on the bed. She comes in and then I regret everything I thought. I was like, no, too self-conscious. I'm scared. I look like, an, I look like a stick of, stick of spaghetti on a table. So she starts to massage. Starts off like, the, 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 like my thigh and my back. And then she says, oh, I'm going to have to remove the towel or like drop it down a little bit and I said that's fine even though it wasn't fine I was so worried I thought to myself she's really going to get into my bum cheek and she's going to you know start digging for gold in there so the towel comes down and she's she's massaging don't get me wrong the massage was beautiful she's absolutely amazing talented you know lavender oil a lot smelt delicious I was actually having a good time apart from the anxiety and she was massaging and massaging and then next thing I know the underwear comes off and I if it, if it wasn't for my face being in the little hole thing and having a mask on I would have screamed I would have been like oh like gasped feeling like I've just been exposed and then I thought to myself she's probably seen loads of bums in, in her life you know you've got a, a nice young youthful perky bum kidding I have no ass. literally if I sit on concrete it hurts because I just sit straight on my pelvis oversharing again I'm very sorry but like she as she was like proper massaging I was just stressing so much and I was butt naked on this table I was full on like bearing all to this stranger who I'd never met in my life and I had YouTube videos of sports massages prior to the, to the massage you know like checking a menu before you go to a restaurant and this this massage did not fit the bill because on YouTube they were fully clothed doing it through like jeans and I was wearing these like thin joggers because I thought ah oh, she can massage through the joggers but obviously they're not going to show bare bum on, on YouTube so of course they're going to be clothed needless to say after the massage was done she was like how was that I was like yeah it was fine thank you she leaves the room I get dressed I leave I never go back I think they still they they yet to contact me to ask me to carry on with this sort of like treatment, but I don't want to do it. It's too expensive anyway. But yeah, that's my most recent embarrassing story. Who is my favourite artist? Right. Off the bat, Nicki Minaj. I'm a, I'm a big Barb. If you're not a big Barb, we cannot associate with one another. You need to know the lyrics to Super Bass. Yikes, Chun Li all those good things even pound the alarm some of her like roman days god that was an experience do you remember when she had an exorcism on stage to, like get rid of roman was it like the vmas or something she was like on stage and i think it was roman holiday that she was doing it to and oh my word look it up it's it's a cultural reset she literally had an exorcism on stage and i was gagging screaming you know the finger wag gasped i jaw was on the floor you know if I started walking I would have tripped over my bottom lip but uh oh it was everything oh, actually you know what that reminds me of do you remember that Madonna performance at the I think it was the BMAs the British Music Awards and she was supposed to do a little costume reveal you know cape moment and she's on the stairs she's trying to undo her um she's trying to undo her cape with one hand and she can't do it so she just gives up and the backup dancers who are supposed to be, you know, doing this costume reveal, like yanking off this cape, haven't realised that she hasn't actually undone it. And they just yank. You know, you you see them get in the stance, you know, feet shoulder width apart, squatting. They pull and she, Madonna goes flying. And 
she goes down these stairs. She tumbles. You hear her going, oh, like on the microphone. <laughs> it is, oh, it's brilliant. It is so good. I highly recommend it. You need some serotonin boosts. Watch Madonna get absolutely clotheslined on stage off a flight of stairs. It's beautiful. But yeah, Nicki Minaj, Ariana Grande, Dua Lipa, Miley Cyrus, Mandelbro. So there's this guy called Mandelbro. He's got a song called Loser Out at the moment. It's it's a real good song. I'm, I'm obsessed. And the thing is, I found this song through an Instagram post. And at first I was like, oh, I don't really like the song. But that was only because I had a small snippet of it. What doesn't help is I find the artist very attractive. He's a very attractive man. And he's like kind of got a bit of an indie vibe. And I was like, ah, you know what, I'm going to be quirky. Let me listen. I listened to it, instantly fell in love. Follow him on Spotify and everything. Oh, he's so good. So do do listen to him as well. He's an up-and-coming artist, so he's quite small at the moment. So if you want to be like one of those gatekeepers that are like, yeah, I'm... I've been listening since like a thousand viewers then like feel free this is the guy to do it on because I feel like he's going to blow up soon I don't know that's just my sixth sense but yeah these these are good people quite like Little Nas X D-Block Europe you know you might not hear it from me but D-Block Europe I I lucky vibe to them sometimes to the point where my friend Charlie absolute babe she's my little bestie at university and just in general actually not best god I really just I feel like I've really just negated our friendship. Don't worry. Charlie, I am your best friend. But no, I started listening to D-Block Europe around her, and she was like, Greg, stop. This is scary. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, this is, this is good music. Just get, get with it. And she was like, no, I don't like it. Please turn it off. And oh my God. She was like, this is so awkward. I don't want to see you listening to this music. Like, I think it's so weird. Like, she wasn't trying to be controlling. She just thought it was strange that me being the extravagant feminine man that I am, listening to d-block europe god it was great oh um bugs malone there's a song um called who am i my my old school friend caitlin who is my you know year six at x she showed me the song and we went to college together as well like she wasn't in science but she went to the same college of course not course god i'm so dumb um and we'd 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 literally dance on the back of a moving bus to this song and people people hated us but this was the phase where I was living my best life so I didn't really care also listened to Pound the Alarm on the same bus and um, well No Limit by g Easy and Cardi B that was a real big one for me okay which Disney princess do you relate to most off the bat not going to say Cinderella because she's a dumb bitch and that's not me that will never be me she has a glass slipper that's supposed to fit perfectly, you know, supposed to fit perfectly, and yet it still falls off. I reckon you've heard that multiple times, but the point still stands. She let the shoe fall off, and she was like, oh, run with one shoe on. Bear in mind, it's a heel, and she's running through this, like, forest, or, like, through this old, dirty village, where there were, like, no proper roads. They were, like, gravel and dirt. So if one shoe's off take the other one off or if it, just pick up the shoe just turn around pick it up do you know what I mean like it's not that deep but um although the Into the Woods version where Cinderella's like oh let me leave him a shoe let me leave him a little clue that was smart but that's not like Disney Disney that's like Sondheim Disney like Sondheim Princess you know but I th oh, I think I'd have to say I'd have to go with Elsa, actually. You know, every 13-year-old's punching the air right now because I've just taken their favourite princess. But no, I'd have to go with Elsa because she's actually a queen. She's literally a queen. Queen Elsa of Arendelle. And, um, well, you know, she runs off, lives on her own. And, you know, she's isolated, and that really speaks to the introvert in me. She's very isolated, pardon the pun, but she can make a house out of ice. You see, I just stamped the floor. She was, like, she was like, bam, bam, quick one, two. You know, 60 second makeover, not 60 second, 60 minute makeover, eat your heart out. She's got this whole mansion, castle, you know, chateau out of ice. And she doesn't even care that she's just sent Arendelle into like 
a winter that could last forever. She's she's got a nice house. That's what she cares about. She's got a nice house with a stunning chandelier. But yeah, definitely have to be Elsa because I, I like I sometimes like being isolated. But she does go back to Arendelle in the end. Spoiler alert. But yeah, I mean if you haven't watched Frozen by now, really get with it. Get with the program. Frozen is a cultural phenomenon. Got some bobs. Even the second one's got some bobs, although not as good. Really missed out on a really good lesbian Elsa moment. They just didn't tap into that. They could really have done something, huh? But they didn't because they're dumb. That's Disney for you. You know. Um Oh, next question. Sorry, you literally just heard me have a a frozen brain moment. Brain freeze, I believe they call it. Or is it like a brain fart? A pause. Anyway, lockdown hobbies. Next one. Love this. Because one of my lockdown hobbies has been, you know, dabbling in a little bit of makeup. Before lockdown started, or was it during the first lockdown? Anyway, on the Morphe website, there was James Charles's palette. You know, the big one. It's usually £40. Got it for an absolute bargain, didn't I? Because I had it on half price. Don't know why. But I bought one. And I've been playing with it ever since. You know, just trying out different looks. I've got a little eyeliner as well and some mascara. So I can do some really fun eye looks. You know, try to cut crease. Wasn't that bad. You know, I actually wore makeup out in public for, like, my, my, my friend's 25th first I want to say 21st birthday party it was this really cute ombre purple um eye look it wasn't smoky eye was it smoky eye I don't know I'm not really familiar with the terminology but my friend Charlie she helped me out with that a lot but I turned I turned a party I really had a look it was it was stunning I don't care I'll, I'll say it I looked I looked good that night and um Yes, yeah, so I like doing makeup. I like doing makeup recently. Bought a Switch, so I've been absolutely bumming out Smash Bros. I mean, I just play a lot of video games in general. Like, League of Legends I've gotten into. The community is toxic, but I live off of that. Dead by Daylight. I can 360 a killer, and any Dead by Daylights out there, Dead by Daylight players will know what I mean when I say I can 360 a killer. Like, I can turn their ankles to dust. Like, I've broken many a killer's ankles. They can't catch me. You know, me as Nia Carson running around. You know, urban evasion. I'm I'm like wet, a wet bar of soap. You just cannot catch me. I'll slip through your fingers, babe. Yeah, what else do I do? Oh, God. Oh, become a bit of a plant dad since starting university. So I've got quite a few plants. And let me let me read you their names because their names... I was so, like, thrilled with it. Oh god, that's, that's an awful sound. I'm so sorry. That was like a weird, like, don't want to hear that ever again. Um, oh my god, give me a second, because there's, right, there's this app that I have, and it's called Picture This. I accidentally paid for the year subscription, because I tried doing a trial, tried being slick, because I was helping my mum with the garden in summer and um, I accidentally bought the yearly subscription. But it was a good thing for me. It's, it's, it's actually saved my plants. So I have a Boston fern. Right, here's the names. I have a Boston fern who I've called Fern McCann. Uh, you know, like the celebrity Fern McCann. I have a lucky bamboo called Lucy. She's in front of me right now. She's very stunning. She looks gorgeous. Um, I have a it's called a crown of thorns, but its botanical name is Euphorbia Millie. So I called it Millie Bobby Brown. Really proud of that one. Thought that was so good. Christmas cactus called Mariah, for obvious reasons, because it only flowers at Christmas, as does Mar Mariah. She only pops up at Christmas to get her check and leave. Although she actually released a song this Christmas, and the harmonised whistle tones. If they, don't, if they don't have you speechless, then you just cannot be impressed by anyone. I have a parlour palm, which I called Parmela Anderson. Again, w tell me that's not great. Tell me that's not funny. I, oh, I'm so good. And then I have a Zanzibar gem. It's my biggest plant. It's very cute. Sorry, I just turned away from the camera, looking at not the camera, this microphone. So it went a bit quiet there. But 
Zanzibar gem. It's my favourite plant. I'm not going to lie, you're not supposed to have favourite children, but I do. It's the Zanzibar gem. And I called it Gemma Collins because it's a Zanzibar gem, you know. Wow, I really had to explain that, didn't I? God. Oh, I'm so sorry for making you guys like feel dumb. Not feel dumb. I act like you guys are dumb. I feel like I, feel like I have to explain everything, but I don't because I know that you guys know that you know who Gemma is. If I was just to say Gemma, the icon Gemma, you've got to expect it's Gemma Collins. She's a national treasure. I'm claustrophobic, Darren. Oh, she's a she's a queen. We love her. She's a, from the hometown Essex. I love her. Absolute icon. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up here, you know, because that's all the questions we've got, and this has almost been going for an hour. But um, yeah, I'll give you I'll give you a little thought of the day. If you're ever feeling self-conscious or going into a a function or a meeting, any sort of setting where there's multiple people. Just fake the confidence. Fake it till you make it. Even your ability. When I tell you I had to fake my ability to get onto my drama course, like, I acted like I knew how to act. I don't know if that will make sense to anyone. But, like, I pretended I was, like, some A-list actor, and it worked. So if that's something to go by, then please do take that on board. But, yeah, that that's everything we've got for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you stuck through to the end props to you you'll get a little badge in the post soon and i'm gonna love you and leave you all so thank you very much adios